Central, welcome to our weekly strengths-based series. I am so excited to be in this with you guys, and we got a special treat tonight. Uh, Marla Lobley, who is the head of our strengths-driven vision team, is actually going to present here in a little bit about our desired outcome in this new initiative of becoming a strengths-based culture. So I'm just going to kick us off by running us through a strengths-based exercise. This is going to help us get familiar with this language, get familiar with our own strengths, and start to use them in our lives so that it's easier to use when they get within the church building. So by now, we hope you've taken the assessments. If not, you can find those in your email. Uh, we have some hard copies at the church, or you can email the front office and they'd be happy to email you a copy of these assessments. Now with those assessments, you've been given your top five themes of strength. So I want you to take out a piece of paper and on the left side of that piece of paper, write your top five themes of strength. As an example, my top five are futuristic, strategic, communication, activator, and significance. So write your top five on the, the right side uh, or on the left side of your piece of paper. Now in the middle of your piece of paper, I want you to uh, draw like a plus sign, like a big plus sign similar to this. And in that top left quadrant, I want you to write God, human. So two words, God, human. In that top right quadrant, I want you to write human themselves. Human themselves. In the bottom left quadrant, I want you to write human human. And then finally, in, in the bottom right quadrant, I want you to write human creation. So as we talked about last week, one of our biggest reasons for having this conviction of becoming a strengths-based church and building a strengths-driven culture is the fact that the Bible starts off this way, as calling us made in the image of God. So as you remember last week, uh, Genesis 1 and 2 makes makes some big claims. It's that humans are, are made in the image of God and we are called to use that image bear quality to interact with creation. And that is where this big conviction comes from. Now in Genesis 1 and 2, we see God create four relationships on this earth. The first relationship he makes is between God and mankind, God and humans. And this relationship is primary. This is the relationship with everything, right? And so you see God, he breathes life into Adam and he creates this relationship between God and mankind. The second relationship you see him create is between human and themselves. And that can be summed up in this line where God looks at mankind alone and says, it's not good. They need community. Right? So like mankind finds himself by himself, right? It's that internal voice we have. It's, it's that internal dialogue we have. It's that, it's that internal life, how we make decisions. It's our thoughts. It's our feelings. It's our behaviors. But we see that relationship between humans and themselves created in Genesis 1 and 2. The third relationship we see is between human and human. So you see, you see, uh, you see Adam as he sees Eve the first time. And he, he's so infatuated with this other human that he starts to write poetry, right? Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she came from man. Right? It's, it's that, that love. It's that brotherhood. It's that family. It's that connection between human and human. And the fourth and final relationship we see created in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 is human and creation. Every, every seed bearing fruit, Adam, every, every green plant, the animals, the livestock, that's there for you to interact with and to create. And we see those four relationships created. And still to those, this day, we have those four relationships. God starts the Bible where he says, in the beginning I created, and he tells us something about himself. He tells us, I possess a quality that you will spend your life surrounded by, which is creation. 
You, you even think about your day today. We, we woke up this morning and we got into, we got out of a bed that was created in a factory and we created our own breakfast from food we bought at a grocery store that was created on a farm or, or was created in a factory, right? And we got our cars that were created by mechanics and engineers and, and we drove to a building that was created by construction workers. And that's just the first hour of our day revolving around creation. We were made to interact with creation. So you have your top five themes of strength written on this side. We have this in the middle. And what we're gonna do this week is I'm gonna ask you every day to pick one of these relationships. It can be between God and human. It can be between human and yourself. It can be between human and human or it can be, uh, be between human and creation. I want you to pick one of these quadrants, and then I want to you to pick one to two of your strengths, and ask the question, how could I intentionally use my strength in this area today? How could I intentionally use my strength, a futuristic and strategic, in my relationship with God today? How could I intentionally use activator and significance with my relationship with myself today? How can I intentionally use communication strategic in my relationship with others today? And how can I, uh, how can I intentionally use strategic activator in my relationship with creation today? So I'll give an example. One of my themes is communication. Uh, and one of my themes is futuristic. And I'm intentionally using those two today with my relationship with human and human. I love you, Central. I do. I love you all. And so I'm going to use communication for a futuristic goal that we would be able to see our strengths within each other someday fully by creating this video today. Anyways, if you have any questions about this activity or you'd like to discuss strengths more, specifically your strengths, I'm around. My email address is on the church website as well as my phone number. Enjoy this lesson from Marla Lobley. It's incredible. I've already seen it. You're going to love it. And we'll see you back at the end for a conversation with one of our college students. Thank you. My name is Marla Lobley, um, and I'm going to talk a little bit today about what the end goal is for the Strengths Driven Church Project. Um, I'm going to start out with the history of how we got to this point, um, and then talk about what it will look like on an individual level, and the small group level, and then the church level. So um, a couple of years ago, when the search committee first came together, um, we were assigned and, uh, to investigate four different areas. Um, one group looked into Central's history, one group looked into the current perspectives of Central members, um, which was that long survey you took a couple of years ago. Um, another group looked into the needs of the Ada community by interviewing community leaders. And then the fourth group interviewed other churches um, and their leaders in Ada, and just to find out what their churches are doing. And even though um, we had four very different assignments and four different groups, all of our results kind of pointed to the same um, needs. And these needs became Central's vision. Um, so I'm going to briefly go over that vision. The first is compelling worship, training new leaders, spiritual and numerical growth, and then every member engaged in using their gifts. And even though I'm only talking about that last vision today, they kind of all tie together. So we need people using their strings in our worship services. And that's why the survey has a pretty big worship section. Um, we need people using their strings to become new leaders. And then as I'll describe next, um, using your strings can bring about spiritual and numerical growth um, for you and for the church. So what it will look like on an individual level when we have reached our end goal of becoming a strengths-driven church. Um, first, you will be pumped up about doing some kind of work for the church. Uh, you'll be working towards something that you're really passionate about, and um, in that work you'll be getting to use your strengths, some things that you're really good at. 
and um, so it's really energizing and exciting. And um, second, you will be growing spiritually. And um, when you are using your strengths, you feel more confident to go outside your comfort zone and rely on the Holy Spirit to help you use your strengths. And um, when you recognize that God gave you your strengths, uh, then you thank Him for them more often and you know that He's going to help you use them. Um, and then the third, on an individual level, you're going to feel so connected to Central because you'll recognize that your unique combination of strengths, there is a great need for that unique combination in the church. Um, the chances that your five strengths are the same as someone else's are so extremely small. Um, and there is a need for your unique combination in our church and in our community. And then finally, if you feel like you're too busy already and the idea of using your strengths to do work for the church sounds really um, overwhelming, uh, just know that there will be some things that come up that you're not really, you're kind of okay at, but not great at, or you're not super passionate about, um, that someone else will be super passionate about and really great at. And so you can let those things go and let them take over, and then you will be free to focus on the things that you are great at and that you are passionate about. And so it can kind of help balance um, if you're worried about already being too busy. So those are some ways that are, you will know we have reached being a strengths-driven church on an individual level. And then for a group level, um, we're going to, we're working on ways to match people into groups based on the survey. Um, and the reason we want to work in groups is because uh, kind of the idea behind the saying, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And just as Paul described um, people using their gifts as a body, and we need different parts of the body to function, not everybody can be an eye, not everybody can be an ear. Um, in the same way, we need different strengths in order to accomplish a goal um, or meet a need. So um, we're working on ways to take that first section of the heart and ability survey where you marked what causes you're really passionate about and grouping the people together who have more similar causes. And then all of those people will bring different strengths and you'll work in groups um, and use those strengths and it's really amazing to work in a group where everyone is aware of their strengths and each other's strengths and using those to the best of their ability. And it kind of amplifies those positive effects that I talked about on an individual level. And there's a lot of energy um, and you're growing spiritually because you're learning to love people differently. And um, things that might have annoyed you <laughs> in the past, you can now recognize, oh, that's, that's really one of their strengths. Um, and so you grow to love them more um, and see them as children of God. And so if the idea of matching people together based on what they marked in their um, heart section, if that sounds really exciting to you, please let me know and we'd love to have you uh, join us in helping figure that out. Um, so then on a church level, um, making Central a strength driven church will involve um, a couple of information components. As a librarian, I'm always thinking about information needs and how to get people the information they need. And um, so in order to make everyone feel welcome um, to be engaged in using their strengths at Central, and there are two information needs. The first is to make sure that you know about the opportunities you, there are for you to use your strengths. Um, so this might look something like a ministry fair, kind of like a job fair where there's lots of ministries you can learn about in one day and see where you plug in. Um, it might look like something else. We're still um, figuring that out. So again, if that sounds exciting to you um, and figuring that out, let me know. Um, and the second is knowing how to take an idea that you have for a ministry or um, an idea that you have for using your strengths at Central um, and getting that put into action. Um, so we, we're calling that a ministry infrastructure. Um, and that's another part of our project is to put together a team and to make that ministry infrastructure where um, if someone has an idea 
they know who to talk to, and that person will help them flesh out that idea, and think through any possible snags, and make sure that idea can become a reality in a way that um, doesn't duplicate services and, and fits in best with Central and the idea of maximizing the number of people who are using their strengths. So um, again, if you want to be part of that ministry infrastructure team, please let me know. Uh, my, direct, my information is in the directory, or you can contact the church office. Um, and then finally, I, I want to say a bit of something about why this is so important um, for us to do on a church level. Uh, the search committee group that um, talked to community leaders had two major findings that they heard over and over from community leaders about needs in ADA. And one of those needs was for transportation. Um, and then the second need was for one-on-one -on -one connection with people um, who don't have any other meaningful relationships in their life. And there's just a really a huge lack of connection and meaningful relationships in ADA. Um, and that second piece, um, connecting with people one-on-one, -on -one, it just can't be done with a handful of people from Central. Every person at Central has to be involved in doing that in their own way and using their own strengths. And so that's why it's really important um, for every person to get plugged in and participate and be involved. Um, it's really exciting. I hope you're excited about this. We have so much potential um, to grow and use our strengths. Um, so I'm going to give you three recommendations of things that you can do to start exploring your strengths. Um, the first is to think about when you have seen each of your strengths in yourself in the past. Um, so you have your five strengths that you found out from the high five test um, and think about where you've seen those in the past, how they helped you make decisions, how they helped you get through hard times, um, maybe they inspired your career choice or maybe they influenced what you choose to do for your hobbies. Um, think about how you have seen those in the past. Um, and then ask others for examples on where they see your strengths in you. Ask your family and your friends. Um, it's really enlightening and uplifting, and they probably really will enjoy telling you about it. Um, so that can help give you kind of a 360 view of your strengths. And then a third um, exercise is kind of just like a daily practice you can do for a couple of months where you reflect at the end of each day um, on where you used your strengths that day. And then you can even incorporate that into your prayer life and thank God for giving you the opportunity to use those strengths. Thank God for um, giving you those strengths and praying, to, for, to, <laughs> praying for Him to help you grow in those strengths. Alright guys, we are here with Katie Netherton, and I'm going to make a claim real quick. I've never made this claim pu as public as I am right now. So two of her sisters have gone through our college ministry. Her dad was actually on the hiring committee, and Katie is my favorite Netherton. So now Central knows Katie's my favorite <laughs> Netherton. Um, Katie's currently in our college ministry. Why don't you tell us kind of a few things about you, your major, where you're working, and all that? Um, I'm an early childhood education major. I want to be probably a second grade teacher. Um, and I'm about to work at Roasters. Yeah, you are. It's not open yet, so I'm training, but I'm excited. It's happening. You're going to be the best person at Roasters. And I know, I know we've got multiple people working there. Troy. But yeah, Troy's <laughs> working there, Jason. Um, so Katie's top five themes, I erased mine and wrote hers, are restorative, empathy, developer, belief, and deliberative. Now, Katie has gone through a strengths conversation with us. She's gone through this material in our college ministry. So it's gonna be something you're familiar with. Um, but today, instead of doing like a, a long strengths conversation, we're gonna do more of like a push style conversation where I'm actually gonna highlight your strength of belief and your strength of deliberative. So a strength of belief, uh, the definition of that would be someone who has core values or guiding principles. Now, deliberative would be someone who is careful and vigilant in decision making. And I've known Katie long enough to know those strengths are heavy in her, and I know that you're, I know you know those strengths better than I do. So I'm just going to ask you a few questions. And the first one is going to be, what are some of your beliefs? 
Um, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and I believe in the church. And then I believe that there's good in everyone. Wow. So. So I want to take that last one. I think most of the people watching would say, Jesus is the Son of God, and I hope they believe there's good in everyone. We'll see. But how, how did you come up with that belief, that there's good in everyone? I guess just seeing it from going to like camps, church camps, and I believe that people make mistakes, mm. and that doesn't necessarily determine their personality. And, yeah. I love that. So, like, the mistake doesn't determine their personality. They still have yeah, good within them. Yeah, I think they're, we want to give them room to grow from it and learn from their mistakes. Wow. So, and that's all you can do. Yeah. So, do you think that conviction that there's good in everyone has influenced you deciding to become an elementary school teacher? Yes. How so? Um, I want to be able to see the good in my students and learn more about them okay. and sometimes they have hard lives at home and so I want to be able to bring out the good in them and maybe influence their life. Sure, which is beautiful and like knowing you like I know you're going to be that influence in their life. So the last couple questions I want to ask are, are going to highlight um, that belief and deliberate even even further and the question I want to ask is who are the people in your life that have gained your trust? Um, my family, Troy, and some of my friends. Cool. So how those people in your life that you say have gained your trust, what did that look like? How did they gain your trust? Um, spending lots of time with them and them confining in me, maybe, and that they trusted me. I knew I could trust them as well. Sure. Awesome. All right, so before we, we wrap up, um, as Central is taking on this strengths-based culture that we've had within the college ministry for a while, is there anything you think Central needs to know? Um, I think we all should find the different people that have some of the similar strengths as us and ask them about their perspective of it and their thoughts about their strengths. I love that. And that's like, I, I wholeheartedly concur with that of like, just because like you're futuristic and someone else is futuristic, those are going to look different, and, and staying curious about other people's strengths uh, is, is going to be so valuable in this process. Anyways, Central, thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next Wednesday night. And boom goes the dynamo.